Did you guys like the beta episode? Cool, we're easing into this. We're building this whole thing as we go. We have Amazon Mylar tinsel curtains. We have two cameras and uh, hi-fi audio. I'm Anne, and that's Aaron. What perspective would you say you bring to the show, Aaron? I'm sort of a man on the fringes of society who doesn't know about anything, and I'm the perfect person to educate. Exactly. Like I said in the beta episode, the show will consist of sketch comedy, conversation series, and a musical guest. And in all of those categories, I want to be exploring pop culture, the meaning of life, and everything in between. And I want to really dive deep into the crevices of each of those subjects. Something's missing. I'm ready to dive in. So Kanye. Uh, Kanye! Kanye has been just... I was addicted to opioids. I had plastic surgery because I was trying to look good for y'all. Something's happening. We don't, no one really knows what it is. I don't even think the people close to him know. I think only Kanye knows what's happening with him right now. By the time this episode comes out, there'll probably have been several more things to have come, but as of right now, let's just say for our purposes, it's just he just has two tracks out and he's aligned himself in a really creepy way with Trump. There's a lot to talk about here. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Number one, I have always been on Kanye's side. But now it's kind of crossed a line. I like to think that he does know what he's doing deep down. He is using Donald Trump right now to make himself more famous. <laughs> that! I just hope he's okay because like, I mean if you just think about everything he's always stood for and that he's like 180 degree reversed it and he's had mental health problems in the past. Just so. Ha! Sweet. I just hope we're not like, you know, like applauding for a guy having like a mental breakdown. Let's listen to this track together, Aaron, and then we will discuss. Yay versus the people. Kanye West. Interesting Kanye that has ever existed. Is he becoming a politician? I don't know. <laughs> We're in the Kanye crevasse of pop culture right now. I'm gonna make a bet about what do you sure. think? All right, I think Kanye is going to have some kind of public explosion. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be positive or negative, but I think he's gonna be in public with a large number of people. That's terrifying, um, but highly possible. I, I have a more optimistic view. This is all a publicity stunt for us to listen to his album that's going to be more political. I think there will be some incredible music on that album. Uh, Kanye, we are here for you. <laughs> Love to have you on the show. <gasps> Come on the show. Come on the show. I'll make you dinner. I'll Sit make you pancakes. Poop. Yeah. Come here is a piece of fan art that uh, Mac Primo made for me while we were making a video about you. <laughs> now we're talking to Kanye. This is actually one of my favorite videos I ever edited and it never like really came out. Like no one saw it, but I put so much effort into it. 
So we are now going to go back, back, way back into the archives, and I'm going to show you this video. Mac Primo directed it. It was for the GQ September issue cover that Kanye West graced in 2014. And I edited it, it and it never came out. So I'm going to share it with you now. Only this first, like, 30 seconds, and then I'll post the rest of it in another link. You recording this? Record this. If you're given a voice, you're given an opportunity to have a voice, you have to take that seriously out of appreciation for, for the opportunity given. For me, it's a, it's a fight because most people are just satisfied with it's good. Most people are satisfied at like just a 10 or something. It's not to just stop at 10. You know, 10 is ground zero. Perfection is ground zero. We need to take things to a genius level. That's when you do stuff that's perfect, that's past what's expected. Well, that means it has to have not been done before. Okay, enough about Kanye. I am so excited to bring out my first guest. She is a singer, songwriter, filmmaker, photographer, who is one of those people where you're like, wow, I can't believe more talents keep exploding out of you. She directs all of her own music videos, she makes all of her own content, she's a renaissance woman, she is Livia Block. I just wake up and I need to sing. It's like, I don't know, I just do. Well, thank you so much for being on mm -hmm. my show and for being my first guest mm -hmm. this first episode. T-shirt. Thank you. Um, so it's, oh, you'll love this because... Joie de vivre. Oh, I love that. Can you translate what that means for our audience it here? It means non the, the joy of living. In the past year, I've seen you throw yourself into your music and your passion and your performance, <laughs> and I'm, I've been so inspired by it. Yeah, this past year has been revolving around music and writing, which was a really new experience for me. I come from movies and photos. It was a new medium to express myself and um, I didn't know I was going to be that comfortable actually doing it. I never thought I was good enough. You know, it's like, I, I just didn't know I had it. And after I experienced it, I was like, oh no, I'm liking this. What is it that turns you from doubting yourself and feeling like you're not good enough to be like, I got this. Well, I can't really say that I don't doubt myself anymore because I'm, I mean, I'm always doubting myself. I always wonder, is, am I doing the right thing? But there is one second before I go to stage where I think I got it because I have no other choice. You, when you jump, this is the moment where it's like, there's no turning back. <laughs> one of my favorite quotes is one of, it's like, those mantras that you have on like magnets at Barnes Noble, but it's so and it's so simple, but it's so right. Is leap and the net shall appear, and I'm all about that. Like, like that. if you've never like leap that. into the unknown, like how are you supposed to know what you're capable of? Who or what do you consume? That's like your guilty pleasure. Every year I pick a show that reminds me of home and that reminds me of. Peace, and I've been rewatching all the Full House, like all those TV shows that reminds me of a time where I had no worries. Everything was just yeah. unicorns and rainbows, and then I moved into the big town and they popped my peace bubble, yeah. and I'm like, ah! <laughs> hard to say. In New York it's kind of like a weird affair. It's like you fall in love with the city. It's like a woman that can't be tamed and you fall in love with her and there's nothing you can do about it. Everything I need is here. What do you think you know now that you didn't know when you first moved to New York? I'm very resilient. I didn't know that. I always thought of myself as the girl, girl, princess, fragile, singing with birds. I was not that fragile. And I was not this little leaf thing because that's the way people saw me. I think New York really made me a woman and a strong one. Cheers. New York will make a woman out of you. <laughs> what are you really bad at? I'm very bad at not having control. Mm. Like I don't like hearing no, and usually when someone's telling me no, I'm gonna make a point in proving them wrong. I was doing, I wanted to shoot this commercial 
and um, I wanted to have a I wrote singing with a dragon and they were like Lydia you cannot have a dragon I was like oh, honey yeah. you try me just tell me no and I'll make a point to yeah. make it happen that's for sure I just wish that <laughs> instead of no someone would say okay that's going to be challenging. How do you see yourself doing that? You can find creative ways to make anything, any of your ideas possible. I think there's a lot of dream breakers out there that says no, that says you will never make it. It's like, you don't need to be realistic. Just yeah. dream it, make it happen. You need to accomplish things that makes you happy. The yeah. joy of life is <laughs> what it is. Any final words? What mm. is on your mind? My first EP is coming out, so please check it out. Thank you so much for being on the show. Now, you will have the treat of seeing this woman in action. We're going to show performance of Can't Help Falling in Love With You that we filmed in this room. This is my bedroom, and it changes every <laughs> time I come into it. We filmed this a couple weeks ago, yeah. and now we're going to share it with you. Enjoy. Yay. Enjoy. Just, whew. we can't help falling in love with you either, Olivia. Eh. Oh. <laughs> okay, that is all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Her Infinite Variety Show. If you made it all the way to the end, I love you even more. If you liked what you saw, you know what to do. Subscribe, like, follow, tell your friends. If you liked Olivia, you can do the same. All of her details are below. We have a bonus track that you can check out. It's gonna be here or there. It's moody, mm -mm, good. Her Celestial Highness Marquita Pring is coming on next week. Join us and talk about how confidence is queen. I'm Ian Lupo, that's Erin Pareka. This is her Infinite Variety Show, laughing, cocking, and singing our way through pop culture to the meaning of life and everything in between. All right, now go out there and live your best life.